And this dynamics problem, it states that in a semi-spherical bowl of radius r, there is a particle of mass m. In the absence of friction, it makes no difference whether the bowl rotates or not. The condition is determined by the rotation omega of the particle. Find the relation between the angle alpha and omega for r equals 6 inches. What is the required RPM for alpha equaling 45 degrees? Probably the trickiest part of this problem is understanding where the centripetal acceleration is pointing. But we'll get to that when we do the free body diagram. So the first thing we're going to do is draw the free body diagram of the mass m. So it's going to be some small particle like that. We're going to have, since it has mass, we're going to have some weight going directly downward in the vertical direction. And there's also going to be a normal force pointing in this direction along the angle alpha. So let me draw a top view to make this a little bit more clear. So this is going to be the top view of this diagram. So this is the center of the semi-spherical bowl, and the rotation is omega. And this is going to be the ball, or that small particle's mass along this direction. And so it's rotating along the bowl at a given radius, which is not predefined. So this is some arbitrary distance, we're gonna call this big R, some arbitrary distance where R is less than, or greater than zero, but less than little r, where R equals six inches. So this is gonna be the big radius, which is gonna be six inches. But the particle itself is rotating at a distance less than six inches. And this diagram is actually pretty clear of where the centripetal acceleration is pointing. It's actually pointing along this plane. It lies on the plane that is perpendicular to the y-axis and points inward directly towards the center of the bowl. So in this diagram over here, the centripetal acceleration actually points in the x direction. It does not point in this direction. If that were true, if the particle was accelerating in this direction, its centripetal acceleration was in that direction, then on this diagram, it would be rotating along the sphere along this path. And that's not the same as the path that is followed by the problem, which is perpendicular in the y direction. So this is going to be y, and this is going to be x. This is the path that the centripetal acceleration was in the direction of alpha, and this is the centripetal acceleration in the direction that is given in the problem. So sorry if that's hard to see, but that's why the centripetal acceleration does not point in the angle that is given by alpha. That's probably the trickiest part of this problem. Okay, since we know that the centripetal acceleration points along the x-axis like that, we're gonna draw that in the free body diagram. So this is not actually a force, this is just the resultant force. That's why I'm drawing it in the dashed line. This is the resultant force due to the weight and the normal force. So we're gonna say this is gonna be the centripetal acceleration of the particle m. So all we have to do now is sum the forces in the x and y directions and say them equal to zero or the centripetal acceleration depending on what direction you're looking at. The angle alpha in the diagram will be right here, which is also alpha in this part of the diagram. So we can use that when we sum the forces in the y and x directions. So we're gonna sum the forces in the y direction first, where up is positive, which is predefined earlier. That is going to equal n cosine alpha minus w. And that's going to equal zero, and that's simply because the particle is not moving up or down in the vertical direction. It simply stays in plane, and it'll just rotate about this line. So we can simply say that n cosine alpha equals mg. mg is just simply the weight. And we can solve the normal force, and that's given by mg divided by cosine alpha. So the next step is sum the forces in the x direction. So if we sum the forces in the x direction where this way is positive, we're gonna say that's gonna be n sine alpha, and that's simply gonna equal the mass times the centripetal acceleration. So that's this red arrow, red dashed arrow right here. So what we can do is plug in the normal force from the previous equation into this equation. So we could say mg over cosine alpha times sine alpha equals mass times the accel uh, centripetal acceleration. Since we know that the particle is spinning at omega, we could convert that rotational velocity into linear velocity by, by using that radius big R. So what we can say is that uh, the centripetal acceleration equals v squared over 
r, but v, the velocity, the linear velocity can be related to omega by using omega r. So we can say this is going to equal m omega r. So I guess the next step would be actually finding this length r, not little r, big r. So that's just a simple geometry problem. So if we look at this diagram, I'm, gonna, I'm going to redraw it. So we ha simply have a right triangle that we can use to relate little r to big r. So what we can say is that r sine alpha equals r. So now that we have everything we need, we just simply plug into this equation. So what we can say is mg co over cosine alpha times sine alpha equals the mass times omega squared times big R, which is going to be R sine alpha. So the sine alphas actually cancel out as well as the mass. So what we end up with is G over cosine alpha equals omega squared R. Just to remind you, our goal is to find the RPM. So what we need to do is isolate omega and convert it into RPM. So let's isolate omega. Omega equals g over r cosine alpha square rooted and th these are the units of radians per second so the first thing i'm going to do is actually plug in the numbers for this problem later we'll convert this into rpm using dimensional analysis so when plugging in the numbers into this problem we have to use 32.2 feet per second squared for the acceleration due to gravity and that's simply because we're in the U.S. system of units. R is six inches, so that's half a foot. And the reason why we're using feet is because gravity is in feet. And then cosine of 45 degrees, all square rooted. And that's simply 9.543 radians per second. Again, the problem asks for RPM, so we have to convert this value into RPM. So this is going to be 9.543 radians per second. So we need it rotations per minute. Let's convert seconds into minute real quick. So this is going to be 60 seconds in one minute. In two pi radians, that is one complete rotation. So when you plug all this stuff into your calculator, what you get is that omega, in terms of RPM, is simply 91.129 RPM. So what this is telling us is that this little particle within this bowl is actually rotating 91 times every minute in this direction. So it just keeps going along this plane that is perpendicular to the y-axis, which was predefined. So this is your answer to this problem. So I just want to quickly recap of what we just did. So the first thing was to draw the free body diagram and understanding where the centripetal acceleration points. If you look at the top view of this problem, we notice that the particle is rotating in this plane in this direction. Therefore, if it's rotating in that direction, the centripetal acceleration must point inward of the curvilinear motion. Therefore, the centripetal acceleration points directly to the center of the bowl, which is the same direction over here. It does not point in this direction. That is false, because if it did, it will be rotating like this instead of like this. Then after that, you have your free body diagram. You simply sum the forces in the y and x directions, and then you relate the equations. And remember that you want to that you can convert linear velocity and angular velocity by using the distance of rotation. So that's what we did right here. So once you have this equation, this equation, and this equation, you simply put them all together and solve and simplify to get this final equation. After that, you solve for omega, and then you realize that's not the units that the problem wants, and then you have to do some dimensional analysis, and finally you get your answer, which is 91.129 RPM. So hopefully that helped you with your studying, and I'll see you next time with another problem.